Good morning. Welcome to services this morning. It's our hanging of the green service. It's a special service and we're so thankful to be here today. This morning for announcements from 4.30 to 5.30 this afternoon is the Community Church's Cantata Practice at Mita Baptist. This week, Wednesday, we'll have our choir practice at 5.30 with Bible study at 6. Our altar flowers today are given by Hazel McKinney to honor her grandson Kyle's birthday, which is December the 5th. Our East Kentucky Prayer Fellowship for this month is the West Liberty United Methodist Church. If you look at the insert in your bulletin today, here is a whole big list of stuff that we're going to do in December and January. I'm going to read all those off so you all read those and keep up with them, put them on your calendars so that you're ready to go. There's also on the back side of that an Advent devotion that Stella submitted. We didn't get enough to do 30 days, so we'll have enough for each Sunday this month. Uh, and to do that, we need some additional ones. So if you've got an Advent devotion you'd like to share to be uh, put in the bulletin, but do that before Wednesday of this week. Any other announcements? Any other spoken requests? If not, we'll ask our pastor to come and lead us in prayer. Or we'll have Dear Father, as we come before you today, we want to thank you for another day. God, we thank you for the sunshine and the rain. We thank you for the blessings that you give us, the many blessings that we, uh, even the smallest of things, God, the uh, being able to just smell the flowers and feel the sun on our back, having a, and then the bigger things, Lord, our families and a place a warm place to stay and I want to pray father for these prayer requests that have been lifted up today we lift them up today and we ask you God to remember them and help us Lord as we continue to pray for them Lord and we pray as you taught your disciples to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from you. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to welcome you today, uh, everyone, to our Hanging of the Greens program. This is one of the ways our church uh, pre really prepares for for Christmas. The Advent wreath on our remembrance table is there to help us count down the Sundays until Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Each Sunday we light one candle until all four colored candles are lighted. And on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, we will light the white candle, and we normally do it here on Christmas Eve. On this side of Christmas, about 2,000 years after the event, it's difficult to feel the deep longing for a Savior which was felt by many of God's people in the Old Testament days. It was a time of darkness, a time of waiting, a time of longing for a Savior. Over 400 years passed, and it's that deep yearning for God to send one to bring an everlasting kingdom, which we remember by the lighting of the candles and the counting down to Christmas. Here's something that longing now as I read from the prophecies in Micah, followed by the joyful song of Zechariah when the birth of the Savior was predicted. In Micah 5, 2, we read, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until that time that which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And this is one of those places where the Bible uh, talks about uh, kind of 
the first and second coming almost together. Uh, but he's, he's kind of shifted here to talk about the second coming. He shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall abide. For now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. And this shall man shall be the peace. And then we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 68 through 79. He says in verse 68, Blessed be the God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for that thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness, and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The word of God for the people of God. You've noticed that the wreath has five candles. Four are colored and one is white. The traditional colors for the Advent candles are purple and rose pink, and they have significance. The purple candles signify Jesus' royalty. The rose pink candle reminds us of our need for a Savior to take away the sin. The larger white candle is called the Christ candle, and we light it when Christmas is here to show that God has fulfilled His promises to us, and Christ has come. The Chafin family is coming up now to light our first candle. Our scripture reading today is from Psalms 80, verses 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou leadest Joseph like a flock. Thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stirred up thy strength, and come and save us. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them tears to drink in great measure. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies life among themselves. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Let thy, hand be, let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the Son of Man, whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts, cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. I have the Advent reading is peace. As we begin this holiday season and enter the chaos and conflict that can come from this time of year, seek ways to have moments of peace. As we think about buying gifts and going to parties, we do not want to get so overwhelmed that we forget Christ. We ask up front for restoration because we will need repair. And as we light this candle of peace, let us remember that Christ is coming with a peace that passes all understanding. Amen. 
And before I leave the pulpit, I just want to say uh, uh, to Sandy Walters, she did such a beautiful job last week during uh, our community um, uh, service. And I just, just wanted to tell you that. And for Stella, her partner there, for the Advent uh, devotion. I really enjoyed reading it. Thank you. The evergreens means God offers us eternal life. When we say hanging of the greens, you probably think of evergreens. This is the focus of such a service as this. Many of the decorations in the sanctuary are green. Evergreens are used to decorate at Christmas because they stay lovely and green through the winter months. While other trees are barren and asleep, the evergreen speaks life. Little wonder that Christmas took this as a symbol of everlasting life. Unending life, which is ours, we receive Christ as our Savior and Lord. For centuries, Christians have used evergreens as yuletide decorations in homes and churches. We tie festive bows and ornaments in the greens to enhance their beauty and our joy of the season. Celebrate our everlasting life in Christ Jesus as we read some of the most familiar words of Scripture from John's Gospel. The Scripture reads from John 3, 3, 16 through 18 and 35 through 36. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The Word of God from people of people God. God. <laughs> At this time, we will join together in the joyful experience of hanging greens for Christmas. If Adam and Samantha will come and hang two beautiful wreaths on our side doors. Then we will join our voices together in a joyful Christmas carol. Joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And have not, have not nature seen. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all the songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat. The sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove. And wonders of his love, and wonders of his love, and wonders. 
his wonders of his love. The Christmas tree means God loves us. Probably the favorite of all Christmas decorations is the Christmas tree. Centuries before Christians used it, primitive people worshiped trees, but that's not what we do. Our tradition goes back to Martin Luther, the great reformer of the 1500s. Tradition says that on a winter night, Luther observed the stately evergreens beneath God's starry sky and wished to bring the beauty inside for others to see. So he cut a tree, brought it into the church, and decorated it with candle lights. We could say of the evergreen tree that it also symbolizes everlasting life along with the garlands and wreaths, and that is so. Others see another symbolism in that the tree is what men used to crucify our Savior. Some, in fact, keep their Christmas tree on its stand after Christmas and cut off all the branches. Then they make the tree into a cross by severing the top third of the trunk and lashing it as a crossbar to the base. This rough cross remains in their homes until Easter as a reminder of God's love and Jesus' sacrifice for our sins. Think of how much God loves us as you hear the words of the angel to Mary and again to Joseph when he announced the coming birth of Jesus. Reading of the virgin birth, first from Luke. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And then from Matthew Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. This morning, we have a very special kind of decoration for our sanctuary tree. We call them Christmons, which is a contraction of the two words Christian and monogram. And thanks to Sarah's good offices for the past month or so, we have some new ones this morning. Christmons are symbols for God or for some important truths of our faith. Many Christmons have been in use by the church for two millennia since the time of Christ. You're probably familiar with the ichthus or the fish by which early Christians identified themselves to each other. The ichthus is used as a chrismon or a Christian monogram. Other picture chrismons might be the star, the hand of God, the anchor, and even the cross. Greek letters are also used as chrismons. The alpha and omega are examples. It's not hard to make chrismons into Christmas tree decorations and some of our members have done just that. We now invite you to come and place the decorations lying on the front pew on the tree. We'll ask the right side to come first, and I don't think we have children here today other than a baby. We normally let the children put them on the bottom, but we'll just put them wherever we can. And when we're finished, we'll ask Paul to come plug in the lights, and we will enjoy our beautiful Christmas tree. I ask you to come now and pick up an ornament and decorate the tree.
us now sing Jesus Loves Me. Verses 1 and 2. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. this time we want to take a moment to remember those uh, people in our lives that have been an important part of our lives who are no longer with us. And uh, we uh, normally take one of the angels over there by John and uh, put it on the tree and feel free to share. You can do it silently or uh, traditionally we will share uh, someone in memory of uh, for one of the ornaments. So this time feel free to come and put one of the angels on the tree and share who it's from.
As we think about all these things here today, you know, it's, I know mixed emotions for everyone. We're going to be having our blue Christmas coming up. It's another kind of sad service, but at the same time, the thing about the Christian, that even in the midst of sadness and darkness, and even confusion. There's always that glimmer of hope and joy that shines through and we saw that with Jesus. I remember growing up in a home that Christmas wasn't always wonderful, wasn't always beautiful. And there were times that we spent Christmas hiding out in motels and things that uh, mom and dad weren't getting along. But I do remember some times that were joyous. I do remember how mom loved to decorate, and it was a little cheesy, but uh, she put lights everywhere. Uh, but it was a wonderful time, wonderful memories. Uh, I can remember one particular Christmas that I was wanting so bad for that year uh, a Daniel Boone gun, not real gun, but the Daniel Boone gun, and a coonskin hat, because I thought that's what Daniel Boone wore, because uh, I watched that show all the time growing up. And I remember that particular Christmas, that's exactly what I got, and I couldn't wait to open it. and. Uh, I kept aggravating and aggravating mom. And uh, I think she finally gave in and let me open it a little early. <laughs> and I remember going out on a warm kind of a day like this and pretending that I was hunting Indians or whatever I was doing. <laughs> uh, but I think about that. I think about how that as a child we long for a gift or we long for something 
And sometimes we get exactly what we ask for. In those days, they longed for a king. They longed for a Messiah, someone who would come as they had been promised. They waited a long, long time. Years went by, and there were some begin to wonder if this is even going to happen. Silence from God seemed like for over 400 years. There was nothing. No prophecies that seemed to be fulfilled. No announcements of a savior or a king. Until finally one day, in the form of a tiny babe, Jesus came to Bethlehem. And that child who was born in that manger was not destined to stay that way, but he was destined to give his life for men. And so God sent a Christmas gift that year in the form of a child. But knowing that this child would someday be hung up on a cross for our sins. And Billy Joe read the scripture today, For God so loved the world, such a great love, that he gave his only begotten son, such a great gift, that whosoever, such a great multitude, would believe in him, such a great gift from us in faith should not perish but have everlasting life. And because of that, Jesus allows us this wonderful gift. And it is a gift, by the way. A gift is something that you receive that you don't deserve. You don't earn necessarily. It's something that's given for us. So I think back about the time when Jesus was willing to leave heaven's throne to come and die for you and for me. And he hung between the heavens and the earth. And I hear his words ringing even today. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And it's because of this that we're here today. And Jesus was willing to give his life. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And after the same manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. And as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you today for the precious gift of your son. I ask you to bless these elements today, God. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ in the world. And God, we pray you bless our time here. Forgive us of our sins. God, lead us in the way you'd have us go. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want to ask a couple people to volunteer to help me here today. Uh, let's see here. Adam. Would you come up? And Bruce. You guys stand to the side there, and we have uh, we'll have two stations, one uh, with intention, the other one. Just come and the bread. As the Lord leads you, feel free to come. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I guess you read first. Stay <laughs> much. Poinsettias mean we celebrate with Christians around the world. Everyone loves the brilliant red poinsettias that we enjoy at Christmas. Like the evergreens, they've been adopted at Christmas as decorations because they bloom well in winter. When our gardens, uh, when our garden flowers are dormant, of course, we have to grow them in greenhouses in most of North America, but they grow in wild in Mexico and in other countries in the south, in the southern hemisphere. That reminds us that people of every land celebrate at Christmas. For some, it is a time of family celebration and giving gifts. But for those who know Jesus, join with us as brothers and sisters in the Lord. 
At Christmas, we realize that we are part of a much larger family of faith, the family of God, his church in the world. And our family of faith not only reaches around the world, but it reaches back into history as we remember the countless thousands who have, who have always believed. You will hear this in the wonderful song young Mary sang as she carried her precious baby, anticipating the birth. I will now read Luke 1, 46 through 50. And Mary said, My soul magnify the Lord, and my spirit rejoice in God my Savior, for he has looked upon he has looked with favor on the lowest of his servant. Surely from now on generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and the whole and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. The word of God for the people of God. Now enjoy the lovely poinsettias as they are brought by Bruce and Michelle. As they come, we'll sing a carol of Mary and Jesus. Let us sing number 249. There's a song in the air, verses 1 and 2. mean God has fulfilled his plan. We have talked about God's love and our joy and all that Christmas means to us as believers. Now we have just one more thing to do and that is to read the Christmas story together and marvel again at how our great God worked out our salvation through a tiny baby. Will the children of the church please, I guess we don't have any kids come up today mm -hmm. with <laughs> We're all God's children. Yeah. <laughs> Scripture is Luke 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Corinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. To, to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I foresee I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those, those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. Now our sanctuary is ready for all of our services of worship through the holidays. We thank all the children and everyone who's helped make it lovely. And we've talked about the true meaning of the season for those of us who love the Lord and seek Him at this time of year. Let us enjoy our sanctuary together as we sing the closing carol, Silent Night, Holy Night, page 239 in your hymnals. Let's stand as we uh, sing. From the manger to the cross. Huh? I think we do from the manger to the cross for... Um, it said something in an insert, but I didn't see anything in an insert. You don't have it. Yeah. It's on the screen. On the screen, okay. For the manger to the cross on the screen. <laughs> Stand as we sing. <laughs> Silent night, holy night. Let's do verses 1, 2, and 3. Silent night. Oh 
creation be your delight. Be your peace, love, and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. 